Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so glad to be worshiping with you this morning. Indeed. Let's now turn ourselves to the worship of Almighty God. We are not our own. So neither our will nor our wisdom should get in the way of God's hopes for us. We are not on our own. So we should not choose what is easiest or the most gratifying way to live. We are not on our own. We are God's. So let us choose to live for God and serve all of God's children. We are not on our own as we walk the streets of God's kingdom. So, as far as is possible, we will forget ourselves and follow Jesus Christ.
We all make mistakes, many of them. We hurt ourselves, we hurt others. We hurt God with our words and deeds, with our silence and inaction. Let us confess to God our sins, trusting in the one who blesses us with mercy. Read with me the prayer of confession. Grant unto us, O God, the fullness of your promises. Where we have been weak, grant us your strength. Where we have been confused, grant us your guidance. Where we have been distraught, grant us your comfort. Where we have been dead, grant us your life. Apart from you, O Lord, we are nothing. In and with you we can do all things. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ has died for us. Christ rose for us, and Christ reigns in power over us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. For in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. When I am down And oh my soul so weary When troubles come And my heart burden be Then I am still And wait here in the silence Until you come and sit a while with me You raise me up So I can stand on mountains You raise me up To walk on stormy seas I am strong When I am on your shore
Let's go to God together in a time of prayer. O oh Lord, you are our creator, our maker, and our redeemer. In your creation, which you designed to be good, you designed that also we would be made to grow, to be renewed, that you would bring new life into being. Lord, as your creatures, as we're moving through life, we are more and more aware of our own mortality. But we're also aware, Lord, of the gifts and promises of eternity. We recognize, perhaps more acutely now, our vulnerabilities. But we also realize that you also implanted in us resilience and courage. For all of this, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for the ways in which you are a triune God. And so this day, Lord, as we pray to Jesus, our Savior, we're mindful of how he presented an example of generosity and sacrifice, of humility and integrity, of purpose and openness. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit that enlivens us, that puts a fire in our hearts for the good news of the gospel that allows us to reach beyond ourselves into the ways in which you would lead us to be more faithful disciples. We thank you for our faith community and for the people who model faith and love. In this time of being apart from one another, we thank you for supportive relationships in all the different ways and forms that takes. We ask God that you would help us to be more clearly focused in our discipleship. We pray that you would help us as a community to pray for each other, to forgive each other, and to encourage each other, and to continue solidly along the path of life that you have laid out for us. In these continuing times of uncertainty and anxiety, we pray for health and for well-being, for wisdom and discernment. Certainly, we ask for our decision makers and those who are charged with leadership. We pray for those who are charged with making decisions locally with regard to schools. And we pray for schools around the nation as they try to make difficult decisions uh, for their students. 
We pray for students and teachers, administrators and support staff. And we also pray for all of those families that have struggled to sort through how to care for their children, how to also be able to be responsible to their employment, and all of the difficulties that would be unexpected that have come to pass. We pray, Lord, your compassion in all of these decisions. We ask, God, that you would be with those who are struggling with all kinds of challenges, those recovering from surgery, those who are recovering from illnesses, particularly the coronavirus. We pray for those who are dealing with grief and loss, particularly in this time when we cannot grief and then grieve in the normal way that we have in the past and show comfort and compassion. We pray, Lord, for those who are struggling with decisions that have to be made, those families dealing with tension and conflict, people who are struggling because of loss of jobs, loss of income, and wondering what the future might hold. We pray, Lord, for those who are dealing with loneliness and isolation. We thank, Lord, of all the challenges that we have faced in this time, and we pray for our children, for the challenges of growing up. And in the same breath, we pray for the older folks in our community, for the challenges of growing old in this time. We lift up those who have struggled with mental illnesses, particularly depression. We pray for those who are in chronic pain and who have put up procedures because of the pandemic uh, and live in suffering because of it. We ask, O oh God, that you would be with each one of us, that you would knit us into a community that is strong. Lord, the list is long. But it's not a list. It's an accounting of our human vulnerabilities, the ways in which we need to live out our lives and the ways we are living. And we're worried about our vulnerabilities. We are discouraged about all the things happening in our world and in our country. We're eager for good news. We're praying for things that would be more familiar and more normal. Lord, we come to you with all of these things on our hearts, mindful of the things that are going on in our world. And so we pray about the tragedy in Lebanon this year, this week. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost their lives in the midst of that explosion and for all of those who are injured. In this week that celebrated celebrated, reminded us of the atomic bombs that were dropped first on Hiroshima and then on Nagasaki. We come praying that nuclear war or the use of nuclear weapons would never be something that we would see again in society, in this world. We pray, Lord, that you would be with each one of us and that you would help us to work for peace. We ask that you would help us to be about healing and hope, that we would nourish and care for the bodies that you have given us, and that we would have open hearts to those around us. Continue, Lord, to work through all the ways in which you already are. Help us to have strength Help us to have faith. Help us to have trust. These things we pray, coming to you with all of the prayers that are on our hearts, those that were mentioned in this prayer and those that were not, knowing that you and you alone know them all. And so we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God of abundance. Sometimes we have to learn how to have faith in the in-between. When there doesn't seem to be enough, show us how your people take care of each other. When we fear to share what we have, show us the grace of receiving an unexpected gift. When we hang on tight for later, just in case, show us that you are in this very moment. In these ways, teach us to give, to share, to offer ourselves for your work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to God's word taken from Exodus 33, verses 12 through 18. Moses said to the Lord, You've been telling me, lead these people, but you've not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you're pleased with me, teach me your way, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. What do you ask for from God when you're at a crossroads? What might you ask of God as you begin in a new direction in your life? Maybe a clear sign, an answer, a door to be opened, wisdom, discernment, some way in making a decision all the solid appropriate answers usually we ask god to do something something for us to give us something or to someone we're praying for to start something to stop something to fix something that we ask god to act moses is at a crossroad yet another crossroads in our passage this morning. The context is that he led the people out of Egypt through the Red Sea, dealt with endless complaints and rebellion, has gone up to the mountaintop, received the Ten Commandments, and now God is telling him it's time to move on to the Promised Land. Moses has seen God act. He hesitates, maybe. God did say he would give him what he asked for. What do you think Moses will ask for? He could ask for anything. Moses has a history with God. He's seen God do unmistakable, miraculous works. He could ask God to do something for him once again. No, he says, God, show me your glory. Show me who you are. Moses crossed a line. We cross a line whenever we make such a request, when our deepest desire is not the things of God or what God can do or a favor from God, when our deepest desire is to see, to know God, God's self, we cross into a new threshold. We're less focused on ourselves and we're more focused on God. Moses wants to know more about God. Glory, show me your glory. 
What is glory? Better yet, what does it mean that God is glory? In the Old Testament, they called it the Shekinah, the glory of the Lord. Shekinah means the manifest glory. They saw the Shekinah cloud and the fire of God that led them. The Hebrew word for glory in the Old Testament is kavod, meaning weight, weightiness, heaviness, importance. It suggests something which radiates from one who has it, leaving an impression behind. The New Testament word is doxa. This word can be defined as beauty. Synonyms used in the New Testament for the glory of God are brightness and brilliance and majesty and splendor. Glory isn't easy to define. How do you find, define beauty? God's glory is the beauty of his manifold perfections. It can refer to the bright and awesome radiance that breaks forth in visible manifestations, or it can refer to the infinite moral excellence of his character. In either case, it signifies a reality of infinite greatness and worth. One thing's for sure, the manifestation of his glory always produces praise. Wouldn't you like to see a glimpse of God's greatness? We all have issues, and not small ones either. Not to mention the world we live in and the seeming chaos all around us. We don't need a small God. What we need is what Moses needed, to be reminded of just who God is, how great God is. And God answered Moses' request, but on God's terms. God put Moses in the cleft of a rock, saying, you cannot see my face, meaning all of me, the totality of me. So I will cover you with my hand while I pass by, and then I will take away my hand, and a fading glimpse will have to do. And Moses waits probably heart pounding and God rushes near him and he gets to see a distant glance of his back and unknown to Moses the effect of being witness to God's glory had quite an impact for when Moses descended the mountain back to the Israelites his face was shimmering the glory of God was on his face for here is what's true if you and I seek God's face we will surely find it and as we draw near and we take our eyes off ourselves and our issues and focus on God, we will find him and we will reflect his glory. God's glory produces transformation. Moses drew near to God and his face reflected the brilliance of God. And it was unmistakable. Once you behold God, you cannot help but reflect God's glory. Don't we sometimes see the glory of God in others, other people's faces? Don't you want to be what people see in you as the glory of God in a reflection? We all exist to reveal the glory of God. We need, the world needs, particularly at this time, to see the glory of God. Not that God has an ego problem, because on our own, life just doesn't work. We've been reminded of that in countless ways in these last number of months. We need a clear beacon for our rescue, for only God can rescue us. God's glory says, I'm here, I'm strong, I have room for you, I can save you. That's the heart of all that's true. Draw close to God, seek his radiance, and reflect it to everyone you see. Let us deepen our appreciation for who God is so that we can pray the same prayer that David, that man after God's own heart, that flawed yet forgiven follower could pray at the end of his earthly life. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. 
Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head above all. Wealth and honor come from you. You're the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. And all of God's people said, Amen. So be it. And to, and to God, God be, be the all glory. the glory. Amen. Amen. Hear now our affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the Savior of the world. Full of grace and truth, Jesus is the ground of our hope and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon earth. Amen. And now receive God's benediction. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
man, sometimes they hold me tight But you're breaking the chains, so always by me And if they're holding me back, you right behind me So I keep my eyes on the sky when I'm praying Cause I know you bring the sunshine when it's raining Hey, hands up, I'm waiting for the breakthrough Everything I need, I'm gonna get it when I praise you, ooh and Even when my hope runs out, you ain't gonna keep me out Oh yeah, you help me see my route Even when the lights go out, yeah When darkness surrounds you, keep pulling me through Cause that's what you always do You are the light.